Hi everyone, in this tutorial we're going to be making this hyperspace text painting effect. I don't really know how to describe it any better. It's kind of like cosmic rays travelling really really fast and hitting a screen and then slowly revealing some text. And you can change that text to whatever you like. When I originally started creating this tutorial I was trying to make a simulation of paintballs hitting a canvas. So if you are looking to make something like that you can just make some changes to the final material shaders later in the tutorial to get that effect. Be sure to check out my other two videos on speeding up Blender renders for free using Google Colab GPUs. This might be particularly useful if you're finding your Blender renders are taking quite a long time to render on your local PC. So let's get started. Okay, so I'm just using Blender version 2.92 here. So the first thing I'm going to do is to create a plane for our canvas. So I'm just going to start by selecting all the objects and deleting them. Then I'm going to press Shift A, Create Mesh, New Plane. And this is going to be the plane for our painting canvas. So I'm just going to rotate it so it's facing upwards. So press R, then uh, Y, and type 90. And that'll rotate your canvas 90 degrees along the Y axis. And the particles, or the paintballs, or cosmic rays, whatever you want to call them, that's painting the text on this canvas, is going to be traveling from here along the, the red x-axis and hitting the canvas. So I'm just going to press N to bring up my transform tools here and let's increase the dimensions to maybe 10 meters. Okay so now that we've got our paint canvas we want to create another plane of approximately the same size to act as our particle source. So I'm going to press shift D and just left click and that'll place it on top of the other one and then press G and then X and then just drag this plane uh, let's see to maybe 25 meters along the X you can type that exactly up here if you want to and that's going to be our particle source the particles are going to travel uh, along the normal um, to the surface and then hit our canvas over here and then paint the text over here but to get the, the shape of the text that we want, uh, we need to have some sort of collimator. So it blocks all the particles, but um, except for the ones that represent the text. So I'm just going to create another copy of the plane here. So Shift D and press X to lock it to the X axis and then just drag it to somewhere halfway between. Maybe just a little bit more. So something like that. So we're going to have some sort of template here for the text and the particles emanating from this plane here are going to travel along and where there's a hole in this collimator they'll continue to pass through and strike the canvas and where there isn't a hole in here it's going to block those particles. So what you'll get is like a stencil of the text on this plane here which is our canvas. Okay so the next thing I'm going to do is just to um, change the scale and normalize them all again. So you can see our scale is currently X, Y, Z, 5, 5, and 1. So I'm just going to press Control and A and go Apply it Scale and that's normalized all the scales back to 1. And that's quite important for particles and using Boolean operations which we're going to be using later in the tutorial. And I'm just going to repeat that process for my other planes. So Control A, click Scale and on the last one Control A, click Scale. So the next thing we want to do is uh, create some text which will act as our stencil. Um, uh, to project onto our canvas. So I'm going to press Shift A text and you can see it's added this default text just over here. So I'm going to press R and then X and 90 and that'll bring the text upwards and then I'm going to press R and Z and 90 and that'll rotate the text and it's currently in the, the direction that we want. So I'm just going to go over here to the right hand side and go to my object data properties and let's change alignment from horizontal to center and vertical center. Okay, so now we're going to want to bring the text over so it aligns with our stencil plane. So just press G and X and just drag the text just somewhere close. Something like that. And I'm just going to press this X axis here and change to wireframe mode just by pressing this button up here. Or you can hold down Z and click wireframe. Okay, so we want this text to be a bit bigger, so it makes uh, takes up most of the size of the plane. Uh, so let's have a look. 
Okay, so over here in the font transform settings, let's just scale up the size of the text. Uh, oh, first of all, we probably just want to change the um, what the text actually says. So with the text selected, you can click it over here, press tab and backspace, and let's just type blender. And now we'll just have to adjust the size a little bit. So bring the size back, something like that's pretty good. And we're going to want to use this text to extrude a hole in this plane to act as our stencil. So I'm just going to go to the side view here and press G and X just so it lines up perfectly or pretty close to the center of that plane. And we're going to want to extrude the text a little bit. So just so it overlaps the text, uh, the plane perfectly on both sides so it'll create a hole for us in the plane. And that looks pretty good now. Let's just switch to shaded mode and have a look. And you can see it's intersecting the plane. Okay, so now that we've got our text, uh, what else do we want to do? Let's go object, uh, object convert to and mesh. Now, once you've done this, you can't change the text anymore. So if you do make a, have made a mistake and you need to go back and change it, you're going to have to create a new text object. Um, but converting to mesh will allow us to um, cut the text from this plane. And just making sure our scales are all set to 1. If they're not, then you can just press Control a scale, and that'll normalize the scale again. Okay, so that now let's click on this middle plane, which will be our stencil, and press the little modifier button, add a modifier, and add a Boolean modifier. Now we want to make sure the difference is selected, and our object is going to be our text and make sure solver is set to fast. And you can see by this outline, you can see it's done a good job of cutting um, a hole into our, our stencil plane in the shape of the text that you want to uh, project onto the canvas. So let's just press uh, the little down arrow and press apply. And now you can just hide the text. And you can see now we've got this stencil here. It's the plane with the text cut into it. Okay, to speed up the simulation a little bit, uh, what we're going to do is shrink the size of our particle source. So particles are going to be emitted uniformly from every point of this plane here and fired towards the, the stencil or collimator. And then whatever's left after passing through the text is going to hit the canvas. But as you can see, you're going to get a lot of particles wasted in this top and bottom region because they're just going to always hit the top of the stencil and just be killed. So just to speed things up and make the simulations a bit more efficient, I am going to go to the x-axis here, just switch to wireframe so it's a bit easier to see, and then press S and Z to scale, and you just want the particles to be just a little bit bigger than the text itself, so maybe something like that, and then, then just left click to keep it at that size. And now because we've changed the scale, again you want to click on your, your particle plane here, control A and scale, and that'll renormalize it. Okay, so particles are going to be emitted from this plane here, travel towards the stencil and hit our canvas. But we want to block any particle um, or destroy any particle that doesn't just pass through uh, our text here. So to do that you want to click on your text plane here, the stencil plane, and go over here to your physics properties and add a collision modifier. And that means the particle at the moment will be will just bounce off the collision and bounce back towards the particle source. And so click on this plane here, go to our particle settings and add a new particle system. So first thing we can do is go to force field settings. No, sorry, let's go to field weights and drop gravity all the way to zero because we just want the particles to travel in a straight line and hit the plane. So now that you've done that, I'm going to go to source, uh, change distribution to uh, random, and then you want to come down to your physics tab and go to deflection, and you want to click die on hit. So this means that when the particles are emitted from this plane and hit our stencil, any particle that hits an area of the plane that um, is outside this text region will be killed and it won't pass through the plane or bounce back um, because we've got no use for those particles. And you also want to turn on size deflect. Now let's go to velocity. 
Uh, now for this I found a uh, velocity where the normal is set to about 50 meters per second. Works quite well. Now let's just see what that simulation looks like. So just um, set the time line back to 1 and at the moment the particles are traveling in the wrong direction. So you can do that, fix that just by going to normal and typing minus 50 meters per second and now the particles will be traveling in the right direction. So you can see as it works at the moment. So um, yep, it seems like it's working quite well. The particles are traveling and hitting our stencil. And you can see the particles that um, hit the letters are passing through to our canvas. And those which are hitting the, the stencil outside the letters are being destroyed. So that's working quite well. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is add a dynamic paint uh, modifier to our paint canvas, which is the one here on the left. So just go over here to our physics properties and add a dynamic paint object. So we want this to be a type canvas. So let's add a new canvas. So you want to change the format to image sequence. And depending on what sort of system you've got, you might want to reduce this resolution. But I found a resolution of 2048 pixels works quite well. I want to set my end frame to 200 frames. Uh, scroll down here, turn off the dry setting. Uh, okay, initial color. So the way this works is wherever a particle hits our canvas, we want it to change the color to white. Otherwise, we want it to be black because I'm going to apply some um, material shaders a little bit later on. So just set our initial color to color and click the color and just drag it all the way back to zero. So we've got a black color here. Uh, okay, so set the output. So what this is going to do is record a image texture every single frame and the image texture is going to represent where the particles hit the canvas. So I'm just going to change my cache path. I'm just going to do two forward slashes so that'll just save the caches. Actually let's go double slash and paint. So that's going to save it uh, because it's going to create a 200 um, image textures. I'm going to save all of those image textures to a subfolder called paint, which is just one uh, directory um, different to my Blender file. And all that can be kept the same. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is subdivide our canvas so we've got a bit more resolution here. So if you just click on your canvas, press tab, go to edge, subdivide, and then it'll bring up this little tab here. Increase the number of cuts to 10. And we haven't quite got enough resolution yet, so I'm just going to deselect, press A to select everything again, and go edge, subdivide again, and I found an extra five cuts works quite well, and you get enough resolution. You can see we've got quite a few um, faces there now. Okay, next we're going to add a um, dynamic paint object to our particle system. So click on your particle system, and add a um, dynamic paint physics here. This time we want the type to be a brush and then click add brush. So as I mentioned, we want the canvas to initially be black and wherever a particle hits the canvas, we want it to be white. So change the paint color from this blue color, drag it all the way up to white. And let's just drag the saturation and drag the hue down to zero. So now we've just got white. And then this time you want the source to be the particle system. And under particle systems, make sure you select particle settings. So that's going to turn our particle source into a dynamic paint brush. So these particles are going to be able to paint on this canvas. Okay, so for my previous, for the example simulation that I showed at the start of this tutorial, I found a effect solid radius of 0.01 works quite well. So when the particles get emitted from this particle plane, they will strike the canvas after passing through the stencil. And this valley here determines how big the spot is when it hits the canvas. So I kept it quite small with a value of 0.01. Now click on your canvas over here. Just go tab to enter edit mode and go, actually let's just go to the front view here. And I found going UV and project from view to uh, UV unwrap this canvas works quite well. Now you can press tab to exit out of edit mode and then just deselect. 
Okay, so let's see what that looks like. So the first thing I'm going to do is to select my particle source here. Uh, let's just make sure everything's all right here. Yep, I think everything's good. So go back to the particle settings for this particle source. Uh, let's increase the number of particles to, I think, 400,000 was quite good from memory. And, okay, let's have a look. Let's actually decrease the lifetime because that'll speed things up a bit. I'll just run the particle simulation. So you can see the collimator is working quite well now, so it's only letting particles through that hit the letters. But you can see the particles are traveling a bit too far uh, beyond our canvas, and that's just going to slow things down. So let's just decrease the lifetime and rerun the simulation and see how far that goes. Uh, probably a bit too much. Make sure your frame start and frame end match that of the dynamic paint. So we only want the, um, the simulation to go from uh, 1 to 200 frames. Let's just decrease that again. And actually, let's drop the number of frames to 200 down here in the bottom right hand corner of the timeline and rerun the simulation again. Okay, that wasn't quite enough. Uh, let's increase the lifetime to 15. Restart the simulation. You may actually have to press the left arrow to go to frame zero uh, to reset the cache and then run it again. And it's going just beyond the canvas now. So I think that's a good lifetime. And it's probably all we need for now. So what I'm gonna do is scroll up and go to the cache menu here. And I'm just gonna bake out the particles simulation so that just takes a couple of seconds, depending on what sort of system you have, and also how long, um, how many frames you've got in your simulation. I think 200 is pretty reasonable for this, but feel free to change it. Okay, so now if I press play, you can see the simulation's running much more quickly because it's not having to do it on the fly. It's actually saved these particles to a um, file. Okay, so that's good. So now that you've got the particle simulation baked, you want to click your canvas, Go down here to your physics settings, and here in the output settings, it's got bake image sequence. So this is going to um, generate the, the image textures for each of the 200 frames representing where the particles hit the canvas, and it's going to export all these image textures to this paint directory. So let's just go bake image sequence. And I did find um, the start of the process does take a few or up to 30 seconds to begin, um, but it runs quite quickly once it's started. So just give it a second. And you can see after about 30 seconds, or depending on what sort of system you have, you can see down the bottom here it's got dynamic paint bake, and it's slowly increasing, and the timeline also represents how many frames it's actually recorded. Um, this will be obviously a lot quicker if you lower your resolution here in your um, canvas settings to something lower. But I found 1024 probably wasn't high enough, um, but it's entirely up to you. It doesn't take too long to bake it, and once it's done, you only need to do it once. Okay, so it's finished baking the dynamic paint now. So let's see what, uh, what this looks like. Okay, so I'm just going to drag across a new window, and I want to go to Shader Editors. Click on your dynamic paint, um, or your paint canvas, and create a new material. So, um, as I said, this sort of depends on what sort of simulation you want to have. You could make this a paintball um, simulation on canvas just by changing this material. Um, but I'm going to try and replicate that hyperspace text effect that I had. So I'm just going to uh, select the principled BSDF, press X to delete, press A, S, and I want to create an emission shader. I'm going to uh, connect up the emission um, output to the surface on the material output. Uh, and now I want to press uh, Shift A to search and type image sequence. Sorry, that's not the right one. A S image se image texture. Sorry. And you want to connect the color output to the strength. So what this is going to do is we're going to get a series of white dots on our image textures. So the intensity of the white dot will uh, represent the brightness of that spot. So that's why I'm connecting it to strength. So at the moment, the strength is going to be set to zero because it's a blank canvas initially. It's just black everywhere. So uh, we're going to get no emission strength whatsoever. But as you get the particles hitting the canvas, it turns the pixels white. 
and that will uh, increase the strength. So that's what will slowly reveal the text. So in your image texture, you want to go open, go to the paint directory, and it's created all these image textures. So 200 image textures representing each frame. So uh, just select every single one of the textures and go open image, and that will um, import the image sequence. So 200 frames, start of frame one, and you can leave everything else the same. So um, in the color, you can choose what color of the, the emission you want. So I just chose like a blue color for my, my demo example. And you just want to create a math node as well. So go Shift A, S, and type math, and just place that in between. So because uh, we replaced um, our strength control or the slider with our image texture, we want a little bit more control uh, over how bright that's going to be. So change your add to multiply. And for now, let's just type one. Now, uh, you also need to create a um, texture coordinates. So uh, Shift A, S, texture coordinates. And because we've uh, UV unwrapped the canvas, we want to connect the UV to the vector. Now, let's just um, press this uh, uh, viewport shading button to render it and see what it looks like. So at the moment, it's black on frame one. So let's just press play and see what happens. Actually, it's a little bit hard to see with the particles. So let's just click the particle source and press the little uh, hide in viewport, the eye button. I just discovered that there was a problem with the uh, export of those image textures. So what I had to do was go to the uh, front X viewport. Uh, sorry, just make sure the canvas is selected. Go to edit mode, tab to edit mode. Press A to select all, press UV, and you want to go project from view bounds. So when you do that, and if I use this window here and go to my UV editor, you can see that the, the UV map extends to the full width of the canvas. So, uh, so this is my final result here, but we'll get to that in a minute. So let's just go back to the shader editor. So then you want to go to the dynamic paint tab for your canvas again and you want to select UV map and select the UV map here and then press bake image sequence again and then that'll, that'll just take a few more minutes again just to regenerate that um, sequence of image textures. Okay, so once that's done, uh, go back to your shader editor for your canvas and you want to press the load image sequence again and just reselect all those images again and go uh, just make sure you've got them all selected and press open image. And yep, make sure the multiplier is connected to the strength, set your color for that object and look at your rendered view. So it's not actually showing anything at the moment and I discovered you just have to quickly tab between cycles and cycles shows it and switch back to EV. And yep, there you can see uh, the text. Um, and make sure you've got bloom enabled as well because that'll give you that nice glow effect. So let's go back to the first frame. Okay, so you actually need to have auto refresh turned on here. So that refreshes the image on frame changes. So you may not actually have to switch your render engine. So just make sure it's set to EV and press play. And there we got it. It's working now. So you can see as the particles are flying through the plane, they're um, they're painting it essentially. So you can see the word blender or whatever text you select at the start will start to appear on your canvas. And by the time you get to about frame 200, you should have more or less a uh, full blender text being revealed there. Uh, you can notice here just on the side of the R up here, you're just missing a few spots. Um, and you could fix that just by increasing the number of particles that are being emitted by the particle source or reducing the radius, for example, might fix that. Um, but I'm pretty happy with it the way it is at the moment. Uh, so let's just go back to the start. Uh, actually, let's just check the strength is okay of the text. So you can drag the slider here and you can see it's changing the, the brightness of our text. Um, actually, let's just set up a camera system. So press Shift A and camera. And where's that placing it? Oh, it's placing it there. So let's just drag it along the x-axis. So we want this to appear somewhere between 
our um, our paint canvas and the collimator or the stencil and let's just align the camera properly so I think we want to have X set to 90 and Z let's bring back to 90 and let's just press uh, let's just press view cameras active camera okay so that looks pretty good. We're just going to have to adjust the focal length and things. So let's go to our camera settings and let's bring the focal length out. Actually, let's just press Y frame so I can see what the bounds are. So let's just bring it so it's just within uh, the edge of our canvas there. When you go back to render, you can see Blender fully appears within um, our camera view now. Okay, so let's go to our camera settings. I'm actually going to add some depth of field. Now I want to focus on the canvas, which in this case is just uh, called plane. So going back to our camera, focus on object plane. Uh, I found an f-stop of 2 works quite well, but you might need to tweak this a little bit. Now let's just minimize that and go to back to render settings. And let's also turn on motion blur. And I found ending on the frame works quite well. Uh, you can leave the shutter on 0 0.5. Uh, let's increase the max blur to 100 pixels and also increase the number of steps to 25, which will improve the motion blur um, calculation accuracy, essentially. Um, okay, so what I want to do now is I actually want to give a texture to these particles that fly in so they don't just appear well, they won't have any render properties at the moment. So let's go Shift A, Mesh, Shift A, Mesh, UV Sphere, and then just drag it somewhere out into the corner of the scene somewhere so you can't see it. And let's just give it a material. So let's switch from surface to emission and just give it a similar color. So that blue color again. Okay, now click on your particle system. Go to your particle properties and you don't have to delete the bake if you're just changing what it's looking like. So go to your render tab over here in the particle settings and go render as object and you want to select instance object sphere. And I found a size of 0 0.005 works quite well. You can see they're very, very small particles now. So let's just have a look now. So let's go to camera go to view cameras and active camera and switch to rendered view and so you can start to see the particles there let's just run the timeline see what it looks like so now it kind of looks like the particles are flying through hitting our canvas and uh, generating this text and that's looking pretty good I might actually change the depth of field a little bit because I want to sort of blur the particles a bit more as they come in. So let's lower the f-stop a little bit. Uh, you can drop it way down actually. And if you go to your camera, I find it quite useful to click camera, go to your viewport display and increase, the, uh, increase this value up to about a value of one or a value of one and that blacks everything outside your camera view and just lets you focus on what's um, what you're rendering in the camera. So that's looking pretty good now. Actually, let's just give that a quick render. So go render, render image. So you can see with the motion blur turned on, you get these nice streaks as well, which kind of look like you're traveling through hyperspace. So that's starting to look pretty good. Okay, so now that we've got that, what are we rendering at? Render size is uh, full HD at the moment. And let's just change the output directory in the second tab down to two forward slashes so that will just save it to our um, same directory as the Blender file. So now that we've got an initial uh, render, let's switch. Actually, let's get rid of this tab so we've got some more real estate. Uh, so just right click, go join areas and just move it over there. And I'm going to switch to from my uh, 3D viewport to my compositor. And I'm going to press use nodes. So you can see our image that we just rendered there. So I'm going to add a lens distortion node. So press Shift A S lens distortion. So this kind of simulates some of the optical properties you might see in a camera. 
So just drop it in between the render layers and the compositor and also press Shift A S and let's add a viewer node. So just drop that there, let's move those over a bit and drag the lens distortion image output to the image of the viewer node and press backdrop up here at the top and that will place our um, rendered image there just behind so we can have a look at what it looks like. And if you come down here to the third tab down to view and you can either press fit or you can use the zoom control to get a, a better scale. And let's start changing some of these lens distortion properties. So uh, I'm not going to uh, use the distort uh, setting but I am going to adjust the dispersion and I'm going to increase that to about 0 0.3. And you can see what that does is it sort of just, um, um, it gives you this sort of uh, spectrum, uh, I don't know, like a prism effect. You can see the colors are sort of um, dispersing out the edges here. Um, so that's looking pretty good. Uh, might need to adjust the camera view just a little bit, but actually it's, it's pretty good. When you looked at the, um, the demo video at the start of this tutorial, you can see the camera was um, jittering around a bit to sort of simulate I guess uh, some sort of hyperspace effect. So now that I've fixed the compositor, let's go back to the 3D viewport. Let's click camera and I'm just going to drag up my timeline here and I'm going to switch to the graph editor. Okay, so we want to uh, add some, some like a jittery noise to the camera position to generate that shaking effect. So in the location, I'm just going to press, uh, move my cursor over the X, Y, Z, doesn't matter which. And let's just go back to frame one. And I'm going to press I, and that'll create a keyframe there. And you can see it's just popped up here with this, the, this keyframe information. So I want to add a little bit of um, noise to the Y and Z location, uh, because X is sort of like our depth along the camera between the particles and the, the uh, canvas. So let's press Y location and press N with your cursor in this um, uh, the graph editor here and click modifiers and go add modifier noise. And we want to reduce this strength to about, what are we at at the moment? One, let's drop it to 0 0.1. So that will add a little bit of noise to the Y and then do the same by clicking Z location, add modifiers, noise, and drop that strength down to 0.1. So let's have a look at what that looks like. So let's just go back to our timeline now and restart and play. And you can see it's added a little bit of jitter noise to the camera position. And that looks pretty good. Let's just do another render and have a look what that looks like. And that's looking pretty good. So let's render this out as an animation now. So go escape. Now go to your uh, render settings, which is the second tab down. Go to your output, uh, output tab here. Uh, we've already changed it to forward slashes. Change the file format to FFmpeg video. Uh, let's change the encoding to uh, the container to MPEG4 and output quality to perceptual lossless. And I think that's all we have to do. Just save your Blender file go back to the start and go uh, file save and go render render animation and depending on your system this could take a while um, so we'll come back once that's finished okay so the render is finished now so let's just go render view animation and there's the final render see it's like this weird hyperspace effect and our text is being painted onto this this weird virtual canvas so for my final render of this tutorial, I actually increased the emission strength of the UV sphere object a little bit just to um, increase the brightness of the hyperspace streaks. You might also want to increase the initial number of particles from the 400,000 that we started with to something like a million. Thank you for watching this tutorial and I hope you enjoyed it. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel.